Welcome guys, it's time to play uh, some arena again. Has been some time. Um, let's have a look at the classes. Mage, Hunter, Shaman. TBF, Mage, Hunter, Shaman. None of these. So we can simply go with the least recent one. Uh, Rook, Priest, Shaman, Paladin, Hunter. So it's Mage. <coughs> And I've been asked by Mike, who wrote me a message on YouTube, um, who is a beginner at Arena and um, like my videos, and that I go into great detail of my plays. Thanks for telling me that. But had a problem with following the draft sometimes because I made some choices who were obvious to me pretty quick. Um, but, well weren't obvious for him, so he asked if I could do like one video where I explain the draft a little bit more, and so I'll do. And so the plan for the next couple of minutes is to go over every card <coughs> and compare them towards each other. So if this takes too long for you, just uh, feel free to skip the draft, or well, or you should have patience if you're in the chat right now. Um, so given that I play mage, secret keeper might have some value, is but usually has a pretty bad body, um, and it's hard to pull this actually off. And if you play it at turn one, it's a one-two. It almost trades with everything your opponent can play. Like let's say your opponent plays a knife juggler, and you can just trade and kill it. Knife juggler is super valuable card. Um, it's a three-two for two mana, which is already quite good, but can also help you with, um, well, getting the math you need, killing guys that have 1 HP, stuff like that. So the run, one random damage is usually pretty good. Uh, some few protector, valuable body also, 2 mana, 2-3. Two, um, the taunt isn't that good most of the time. Um, sometimes you can like force your protect minions like Knife Trickler or force your opinions to make awkward trades, but overall Knife Trickler is the best alternative here. Um, Stone Skin Gargoyle is quite a bad card because of the bad stats. It's like a demolisher, but without the uh, the upside of um, getting the two random damage to something, which really matters. This thing doesn't go like it can kill some one drops, and that's about it. And it dies pretty easily to most of the other cards and. That the ability triggers at the start of your turn makes it even worse because you can't like trade and heal it back up, but you have to rely on your opponent not to trade with it during it. It requires a buff, um, so uh, people thought about you could play it with Mark of the Wild or Blessing of Kings or something in Constructed, but nobody has made it work so far, so no. Ice Barrier is basically, well, it doesn't affect the board state because it just gives you 8 health basically. It's basically, yeah, it's healing touch from the druid, it's comparable. Whereas Sorcerer's Apprentice is also a 2-3-2 two, uh, two for 2 mana, but has an upside to it which can give you very effective combos like 1 mana Frost Bolts, um, 2 mana Arcane Intellect, something like that which really pushes in terms of tempo, so, or uh, 6 mana Flame Strike a turn six or something. So people are usually like forced to deal with it or you can at least get potential tempo. Out of these raid leader has a very poor body for three mana and you for the very beginners of you, you actually see a pattern that bodies like stats on creatures matter a lot in Arena. So given that the Lost Toll Strider is of course the best deal here with 5-4 uh, for 4 mana, um, high health is always like preferable because um, like a 4-5 is most of the time better because um, a 3 drop like a Tinker Town Technician which is buffed up or um, an Ogre Brood or something can simply trade into that. Or if your opponent has a Frostbolt and is a mage, Frostbolt Fire Blast kills it, whereas 5 health survives it. Um, Reckless Rocketeer, of course, has the upside of 
um, being a charge minion, usually you use it to remove something, which makes it a very overcosted fireball in this regard, which is even worse than a fireball because it's just that's five damage and it's and you can't kill something over taunt. So overall, um, reckless rocketeer um, fits into some specific decks if you need a finisher or something fast, but. Given the state that we have so far, I uh, go with Troll's Rider. Out of these, Stone Tax Borrow is a 1 for one, for 1 with charge, gets killed pretty easily. I talked about stats a lot already. 4-4 four, four for 5 mana isn't really valuable. 3 damage um, matter, might matter sometimes, but most of the time they don't do anything to the board. Uh, if your opponent plays a Yeti and you play a Nightblade the turn afterwards, you can simply trade and it leaves a 4-1 up whereas you just wasted your 5 mana turn. So the Yeti is one of the like most valuable cards in the arena at all because it has so good plane stats and <clears throat> trades down with almost everything and can also trade up. So it's pretty good. Out of these, Con of Cold usually doesn't do too much. It can delay your opponent's plays, which also fits uh, if you draft an aggressive deck or if you like need something it other than that it's a four mana deal one damage to three minions which is like <clears throat> comparable to arcane missiles or something which is a one mana spell a uh, flame strike is one of the most feared cards in arena and i'm pretty glad that we're that i've been offered that already so i don't have to bother whether or not i get it and Arcane Intellect is uh, generating card advantage on the cost of tempo, which like combo out with uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice lowers a little bit the, the tempo aspect, but it's not that good. Flamestrike is top tier, especially if you don't have anything. I'll take that for board clear turn 7. Out of these cards, Nuruba Weblord um, has the same body as the Stone Skin Gargoyle. Uh, but the upside of costing one mana less, it's but uh, it's still still a pretty bad body to have. Also, uh, I don't have battle cry minions so far, but usually uh, it messes with your curve also, and um, usually it just gets traded away. Let's say you play this and your opponent plays Yeti, then your opponent has a four four trades here. You, you just did one damage to it, not even three, like if you play Nefjord or something. Uh, that said, a 2-3 three for 3 mana, it, this is like an Amani Berserker, just for 1 mana more and therefore gets taunt. But the taunt doesn't really matter because it usually trades with everything. Like, as a mage you could enrage it yourself, which you could also do with an Amani Berserker, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the taunt is actually pretty bad because uh, <laughs> it's the first target to hit, but it has a very weak body for it. 3 mana. <clears throat> Loot Horda also has a very weak body for 2 mana, but has the upside of drawing your card. So, actually, your opponent has to deal with this card, and you still have a card. So, uh, in terms of card advantage, uh, this guy is a lot better than the other two. And let's say you play a Loot Horda, and your opponent would play a Knife Juggler, and, but would have to hero power it, if, a, if it's a Druid, Mage, or Rogue. Then it's okay, like he spends his whole two <clears throat> turn 2, where you spend your turn 2, but you still have a card. Um, that's like the worst case that usually happens. If it's like a priest or something, uh, you can't even clear this and might hold back to his 2-drop. And you might deny him a turn 2 by with a card that actually cycles. So overall, Lutoro is a pretty good card. Out of these, Mana Worm can be scary. We don't have any spells so far other than the Flame Strike. Um, but if you pick up one spell or are on, or you are on the coin, you can make it a zombie chat without the, the downside. River Croc is just a body for two mana, reasonable. Polymorph um, <clears throat> uh, is one of the best hard removal spells in the game. And we want at least one of these in our decks. Um, Hmm, that's a pretty good pack. Uh, Lost Tall Strider, I already told about this. Reasonable card, but not optimal, especially compared to Yeti. <clears throat> Mentor Commissionary is highly over... Like, in terms of stats, 
it's highly overstated. <clears throat> or, or the stats are too good for the mana cost, but it has a big drawback that denies you um, some value for the upcoming turns, which slows down your tempo that the body brings with it. But uh, if you can trade it away fast or just hit your opponent fast, or you have some spells and weapons or something to co uh, to follow it up with, so you don't suffer from the downside so much, it's a pretty reasonable card. Also, it's a heavy hater with seven man uh, seven attack that doesn't die that easily with six attack. Like the pulse rider also needs something. Flame cannon is a pretty good removal card. Um, and I'm actually not sure which one to take right now. Because we could use both a 5 drop, a heavy hitter, and a removal spell. I think I go with Flame Cannon then. But it's pretty much a preference choice. But I'm pretty sh I'm pretty happy that we did this pick because we can do it now. We already talked about Nuruba Weblord. That's basically the same body like this. And it's a pretty scary one without downside. But the two health matter a lot. And like I said, Yeti or Tall Strider would just trade into this, but not into this. So we're going with the Ventrico here. Wow, that's a really interesting epic pack. Actually, I haven't used, I haven't had the chance of drafting Echo of Medivh in Arena yet. Sea Giant is the best giant in Arena because uh, there will always be minions, and even if there are not, you can. Or your opponent just plays one minion, then you can at least play an 8849, which isn't terrible, at least. Um, other than the Mountain Giant, which you simply can't play if you, like, if you are in a top decking situation. Uh, Recombobulator, reasonable body again for 2 mana 3 2, and can be used as a heal, or if you have an, a minion with a decent battle cry, like, I don't know, an owl, for example, 2 drop 2 1, which silences. In this case the echo is... Um, I'm not sure. I think Sea Giant is the most scariest thing. Also I have a lot of two drops already. Um, echo is basically like arcane intellect but you know what you get and you don't suffer from fatigue later. Um, can be nice if you like played with two or three minions. Let's say you play knife juggler, loot hoarder, coin echo. Well, it's already some value, but I think I go with Sea Giant just because it's such a scary card. And I don't need more 2 drops right now. Uh, reasonable 5, 4 drop, uh, one less attack than the Yeti, but with a potential upside of um, annoying your opponent if they play spells. And for Grizzly, 3-3 three, three for 3 with Taunt is an okay in stats. But the Bullerfist Ogre is what I'm looking at, because I have not so much late game so far in the stats. It's like, um, the Ogre is like the chill one yeti of the 6th slot. So, there are not many cards that you would pick over your Ogre if, you're, if it fits your deck and curve. And so for now, I've, I'm one third through the draft. I picked up one, two, three bodies that I can play on two, which is, yeah, like if we extrapolate from here, then we will end up with nine bodies, which is uh, okay. I also have a cheap removal card, um, two four drops, and one, two, three, four, five plus cards. So overall, I'm quite happy with the curve so far, but we want, we definitely want to pick up three drops um, in the last two thirds. So given this, I could go with the Mirror Entity, and if I knew that I could draft the Mad Scientist, I would probably do it. Uh, but uh, I'm not sold on it too much, because usually your opponent... Like, the biggest advantage that Mirror Entity gives you is that your opponent has to make a weaker turn. Like, let's say they want to play turn 5 Venture Co, and you play this turn 4. And then they have, hmm, okay, so I have to play my loot herder first, and then I play it with a Sorcerer's Apprentice instead of like just dropping the Venture Co. <clears throat> but overall, just playing it this on three is will usually just give you best case scenario a three drop, um, maybe a four, but most of the time not, so I'm not very sold on this. Frostbolt has some 
Like it's early game removal and late game you can freeze something or just direct damage. Um, it's always nice to have the flexibility of spells and so far I just have the flame cannon here so I go with Frostbolt. <clears throat> That's what I talked about earlier when I drafted the Sea Giant Mountain Giant, it's just awful. Because if, if you get it in a top decking situation you will never play it or you have to hold back two more cards until you can play it for 10. That's horrible. Spellbender um, is a fun secret, but you, you with the potential spare parts in Arena, you don't <clears throat> really get a valuable minion out of it. It's cool against Paladin if they play Blessing of Kings or something, but most of the time it's just a weaker counter spell. So given that I don't have any 3 drops so far, I go with Murloc War Leader, which is a 3-3 three, three for 3. Uh, it usually doesn't have any Murloc synergy in, with the deck. And if you can draft it, it's pretty funny, though. So, this is an interesting choice. But, like, Mirror Image um, it doesn't get value, pretty much. But it denies your opponent some trades, so you can make the trades. Basically, it's, it's basically a tempo card. Um, which sometimes really shines and sometimes is really awful. Mana Worm, already discussed. Um, with two early game spells, has some value, of course. But having two flame strikes in the deck is really strong. Even three flame strikes is pretty strong. So I'll pick this right now. Uh, Gold Shy Footman 1 2 for 2. It's, li it's like the Secret Keeper S and has taunt, so it has to be attacked. Uh, it's a pretty weak value. Trades with, let's say, let's see what we have in the 2 slot, for example. Can kill it, can kill it, kills it for free, kills it and draws a card, kills it for free. So. Not really good. Unstable Ghoul can backfire a lot, like kill your own loot hoarder, kill your own injured guys. Um, it's better in mage than in classes like Paladin, for example. Um, but still, given that I have no, like, my only 3 drop is a Murloc War Leader and Harvest Gone is just a very valuable 3 drop. Because it, you can kill it and then you have to kill it again. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, Doomsayer can have potential, but usually the situations where you want to drop your Doomsayer are pretty rare. And even if you're in such a, such a situation, it's basically a heal for 7 best case because your opponent will just kill it, usually. Pyroblast can be a dead card, um, ca or it can be the reach you need in the end game just to kill your opponent at some time. Um, still, given my like of 3 drops and I'm halfway through now, and I would definitely want more than... like. Average case from here, like, again, if I make the calculation and just put everything times two, then I end up with four, three drops, which isn't even mad much, so. Murloc War Leader, and they have, like, synergy with each other. Like, if you coin out Murloc War Leader into Murloc War Leader, you get two, five, fours. <laughs> nice. Diwolf Alpha is cool for trades, but usually requires your board. Um, to get real value, you need at least two minions with it, so you don't. You usually don't want to play it at turn two on its own, um, which makes it a little bit weaker. Um, because it trades both cards like Tro Stone Splinter Truck, and this, it, this stays around, and this dies. Um, like I said earlier, th these are situations that you don't want. Arcane Explosion has some merits, but it's not very strong, and Stone Splinter Truck is also annoying against spells. If your opponent is on the coin and plan on coining on something, you get a 3-3 three, three, for 2, which is pretty good. Um, kind of Cold already discussed, Elven Archer is basically like a... Um, what's it called? Stone Tusk Borer, but it doesn't die for dealing 1 damage to a minion. So that's an upside, so it's a little bit better, but given that I play mage, I can simply ping with my hero power and don't rely on having a 1-1, one -one, which is pretty weak in stats. Snow Chugger, uh, Con of Cold already discussed, not a, not a great card. Snow Chugger has a reasonable body, has the mech tech, which is also sometimes important uh, if you pick up something like a Goblin Blast Mage, which is a Lost Tall Strider, just with the upside of dealing damage if a mech is on the board. And the Freeze is also pretty nice, even if you like, play it in the late game, then you can at least freeze a minion that kills it. Or freeze a minion offensively. Like, run it into an ogre to deny him 6 damage the next turn or something. So, the curve for now is pretty heavy on the 2. It looks, a l looks worse than it is, though. 
But we actually would like to pick up some late game. We have one, two, three, four, five, five plus cards. That's by far not enough. But given these picks, do I have a pirate? Not really. Raid leaders already discussed. Chips cannon in this deck. I have no pirates, so it will basically be a two mana two three, which isn't too bad, but also not really good. Given my low amount of four drops, which are these two so far, I'm tempted to pick the OIC Snapjaw, also because I'm a mage, uh, so the two attack isn't really good, but against three health minions I can at least use my Fire Blast Hero Power. Hmm. So here we have the opportunity of dra drafting more three drops, but also my five slot is pretty bad, and Slush Belt is just a very good card protecting my own minions, and has reasonable stats for killing something that you, that have been played earlier, so... Also, the spell damage here doesn't really matter. 4-3, four, 4-3 three, four, three is okay-ish, but... Yeah, given my low amount of late game, I only want to... The Belcher. Okay, that's also pretty interesting. So Dalaran Mage is basically like uh, the Stones to Gun Gargoyle, but it gives you spell damage. Which won't matter too much in the deck, uh, in this deck, and which just dies to almost everything else. So it's awful. Um, Spider Tank is like the chill wind yeti of the three slot right now. So the only three four that you had in the game before was Dark Cultist was in Priest, but now this guy trades with like every two drop and survives basically. If you cut out Millhouse Mana Storm and Succubus. So I'm pretty tempted towards the spider tank. Um, anti killbot has a very bad body, so like that's that's what, where you would like to play the recombobulator on that I turned down earlier. But the eight health turned out to matter quite a bit in arena, and it's I turned down also the uh, ice barrier earlier. But this is what this is because it just this. Do, uh, Ice Barrier doesn't change the board state, whereas this gives you a 3-3 at least. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, the body 4-5 mana is pretty bad, but it also gives you health, so that's an upside. But uh, given my still my low amount of 3 drops and that Spider Tank is just really bad, good there, and that I have a good amount of early game that I want to like um, push more through, I probably won't fall behind too much to make uh, an anti kill but necessary. So I'm still not getting any late game, so we have two one drops and one two drop. Um, Cockmaster one two, I don't have too many mechs, I have the snow chugger, I have a harvest golem, I have a spider tank. Probably not enough to make this valuable. Um, Voodoo Doctor is it one mana two, well, it's okay. <laughs> it's not a great card, but like it dies to prevalent arena classes very easily, and the two health usually don't matter too much. If you compare it to an Earthen Ring Farseer, for example, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3 mana, which is, like, average, and, uh, well, it's not great. Cobalt Geomancer are also not a great card. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 drops so far, these kind of count. Um, not sure if I want to pick the Geomancer, actually. Kind of... Turn towards these two. I mean, I can play this on one and maybe trade with something, or I can heal something later, which is also not too bad. Uh, the Geomancer just affects Flame Cannon, Frostbolt, but into Flame Strikes. It's not too bad. Well, we'll see this later, but I'll pick the Voodoo Doctor here, but it's pretty close. Chill and Yeti. Um, sorry. <laughs> The Ice Lance is a pretty bad card because it usually just freezes. Uh, I have one freeze in the deck, which is Frostbolt, so you actually cannot combo it. The Iron Big Owl, like I said earlier, is a silence, okay, but has a weak body. And like I said earlier, there are not many cards that you would pick over a Yeti in the first place. This wasn't one of them, too. Windfury Harpy has a Yeti body, so even though it has Windfury and can be very scary, it dies pretty easily as a 6 drop, so it's a below average card. It's not awful because it threatens uh, the board and you like can get 2 for 1s, 3 for 1s if you can kill small guys with it, or if you can buff it, or if you can just deal 8 damage to the face. Um, 
but it usually doesn't stay around because of its low stats. Hearts and Squire, 1-1 one, one with Divine Shield at least, but I don't have anything that buffs uh, attack, so it usually just dies after two trades. Um, I'm tempted to keep the uh, to pick the duplicate here because it, if you can set it up properly, like if you just have a Yeti on the board or something, then you can make it worth it. Um, given that my two alternatives aren't great, and this this is like basically card draw, and I have a pretty good minion quality overall. I have Harvest Golems, Spider Tanks. If you pick like if it kills the Murloc Warrior, you have two Murloc Warriors. They buff each other. That's good. I have two Yetis. I have an Ogre. To one winter co, so double chat has some value in the deck. Uh, again, Iceland's pretty poor card, especially in this deck. Naruba Web Lord, same. Water Elemental, one of the best mage class cards. One of the best four drops in the game. And one of the best mage class cards, too. Very good stats, trades with almost everything that can be played earlier. And, f and freezes, which is super annoying. And six health is hard to deal with. So if you play this against a rogue or a warrior, um, they usually cry. <laughs> we take that. Uh, Wooda Doctor again. Oh, already have this one. This is a 6 drop Lost Tall Strider. No. Like, uh, well, if you compare it to an anti kill bot, the stats are a little bit better, but the health buff isn't um, as strong. Like, it's half of it. And this just dies to everything that has been played before, basically. Fireball, one of the best mage cards, too. Um, yeah, it's just efficient removal, efficient um, burn, efficient reach. It's just a good card, and given that we have two flame strikes already, um, no, it doesn't really influence that. But <laughs> okay, so we picked up a lot of good fours. We have two Yetis, which is good. Uh, one lost tall strider, which is reasonable. One wasted snapshot, which is kind of weak, and we have. Two, two good removal spells, and we have a watermelon, which is also pretty good. Uh, Silverbird Patriarch, it's like uh, Delor Mage and Stone Skin Gargoyle, just has poor stats, and the taunt doesn't really help. Sometimes it helps, but the occasions are very rare. And if you like, um, imagine each minion played on its specific turn. If you play this on three, and your opponent has a knife juggler or something, then. It just deals one damage and dies most of the time. Ooze, 2 mana, 3, 2. We already had that. Uh, reasonable stats and a potential upside, especially against certain classes. So we go with this. Um, given my low amount of 5 plus cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 so far. I'm pretty tempted towards the Silver Knight already. Clockwork Gnome is a reasonable card. It's like the Voodoo Doctor, but with a bigger upside because the spare parts are like half a card or something. Sometimes more if you have a reversing switch, which can actually matter a lot, or freeze a minion or something. Uh, Cockmire Story already had that too. It's not very valuable on this deck. Silver and Knight is basically 6-6 six, six worth of stats for 5 mana, which is pretty good. And like I said earlier, we need some more light game, so that's good. Did I pick a ship's cannon earlier? No, I didn't. So no pirate synergy. I also don't have weapons, obviously. So, And I have a good amount of 2-drops also. And 3-slot is still a little bit underrepresented and Scarred Crusader is um, against all, class, all other classes than Mage. It's a pretty annoying card. And the last pick, uh, Angry Chicken. Haha, <laughs> 1-1 one, one for 1. She does basically nothing else, pretty poor. Cold Light Oracle is a 2-2 two, two for 3 mana, which is also pretty poor, it's like Raid Leader, but also gives your opponent more options um, and just gets straight away usually, and we already hit the Sludge Belcher, which should fit the deck pretty good. So, this took quite some time. Uh, I hope it was a satisfying result. Um, given the deck right now, I am a little bit... Concerned about the light game because they have like one, two, three big bodies, which is a little, little bit too few for my taste. Like, I would have liked to maybe a second venture curve or something. Uh, the six slot is only ogre, maybe would have, but the sea giant kind of counts. 
as second ogre. So overall, pretty reasonable deck. Uh, good early game. Just a few weaklings like Voodoo Doctor, maybe Duplicate. Would have liked to pick up a Mad Scientist to make this work really well, but okay. Uh, pretty good four slot. Pretty good five slot. A little bit weak in the late game, but I have cards to catch it up with two flame strikes and a fireball. Other than that, I don't have much catch up, me uh, many catch up mechanisms here. I don't have taunts. I don't have any taunts actually. And I don't have any heals. So I rely on getting the board, keeping it, burning and frosting everything away that come that crosses my way, and then get some wins or clear boards with flame strikes. Okay. Let's see. Um, I'll just make the deck list ready. I'm pretty <laughs> pretty curious how it will turn out with the Murlocs. I have two sl Ah, oh, no, I've actually I have two very good taunts. I forgot the sauce belchers, the sludge belchers somehow. Oh, that's good. Like I would have liked to have like one or two more late game cards. Uh, maybe one or two six drops. Maybe a frost elemental or something. I also have just these three cards that have an attack value of more than four. So it will be hard for me to kill um, five attack minions. You asked for it. But we'll see how it works. You apart. Just format the deck list. There we go. And the score for you, of course. Okay. Um, I'm not keeping the Voodoo Doctor, or do I? No, it actually won't matter too much. Uh, these are pretty good 2-drops. I don't have to save this for a weapon. This deal has basically the same purpose, but I also get a card from it. Maybe I can heal something later with the Voodoo Doctor. Um, what did I... Oh, that's a pretty good curve. I have a 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't want to play the Fireball on 4, probably, but... If he plays a Yeti, then... Might be. Oh, that's also a good 3 drum. So I start with Lutorda just to... like Maybe he has a 3-2 and has to ping it and this should deny him some, some tempo. Okay, so he pinged it, so if he, he kept one card, so it might be that I... Well, I'm still into this very basic explanation mode. <coughs> uh, well, not much to do. He kept one card, so maybe I denied him play, you'll see. If his turn two was ping anyways, then, well, it happens. This was a pretty weak turn three. Um, So I will probably trade here, so I don't have to do it myself. Um, actually, if I assume that this will trigger a mirror entity, I want to play something that I can kill next turn. No, that can kill something next turn. So I should probably... Well, it doesn't really matter, actually. If I get him a Harvest Golem, I, uh, I cannot ping it. But. Uh, oh. That's strong right now, so I'll go with this. Up. Okay, so he got a secret out of the med scientist. Which might actually be real and a pretty bad for me. Um, also played a good amount of cards here. Well, yeah, these four five mana worth of minions for four. <sighs> I cannot really give him another harvest column. I feel like, but Lost Tall Strider is not really better in this regard. Um, hmm. 
coin or So it wasn't duplicate. Hmm. Job's done. Okay. So it's neither duplicate nor Miranity. I'm okay with him pinging this. Okay. There's a situation where Colonel Cold was okay-ish, but he spent his whole turn, so if he just pinged it, he could have played a 3-drop with it. So it's probably Ice Barrier, Ice Block, or Vaporize. Should be a little bit concerned. Slush Belcher really trades with this really well. I don't have anything else. <laughs> Wow, she won the lost tall strider, which was ex already injured. Uh, this was a strange move, actually. I mean, he silenced the sludge belcher already, so he could have just hit and ping. He, he wouldn't have needed to. Uh, well, whatever. Um. Hmm. <laughs> One off of the sea giant, so e it's either build a fist ogre or a harvest golem shark. <laughs> ogre seems good, especially since he just used his polymorph, which would be way better for this ogre. <laughs> um, and I don't want to run a full health um, belcher into the vaporize. It might be a vaporize. He's doing very strange trades, I have to say. Hmm. I could play Shark Sea Giant. Doesn't seem too bad. Next turn I can ping something, like this thing. If he runs both into the Ogre, it's totally fine. I wonder. Because I st still have the Sea Giant on the board. If he has Flame Strike, um... That's three, that's... No, that's four, that's... No, he can't clear. Okay, fine. And I can... Well, I can test the secret uh, first. Counterspell? Probably counterspell. I would assume. Let's no just a scary board. So, if I want to flame strike, I should probably trigger it first. Might be Ice Block. Ice Block is pretty pretty silly card to get in Arena. Huh. Would be a really good board to Flame Strike. I'm not sure if you wanted this to hit. <laughs> Five, that's eight. Let's just check for counter spell, I guess. There we go. I don't really want to trade here, so I can simply. Uh, huh. Kind of messed this up in case of a second cone of cold, but it's not really a concern right now. So even in the case that he has his own flame strike, which deals five damage now and then kills everything, uh, I have a flame strike on my own to clear his board. <laughs> Pretty good knife. One shot, one kill. So there's this elven archer. We 
saw a lot of cards that I turned down for a reason, like Cone of Cold, like Elven Archer. Didn't really help him. But we were able to, like, proceed with the game plan that I mentioned earlier. Good curve, good and efficient minions every turn. Get the traits. Everything good. Sorry, I'm still in this. Oh. Let me know later how you like it. It's very basic approach of explanations. I can't really leave it right now. <laughs> um, so against the Paladin, I'm still not pretty sure if I want to play the Wood Doctor on one. At least I go first. So there's a the potential. Uh, I'll keep this to kill whatever he plays later. That's really good, actually. One, two, three. It's also quite okay. Like, if he coins out a guy, then at least the Voodoo Doctor traded with a coin. <laughs> ah, that's good. Pretty good top deck, also. I wonder if I want to Frostbolt this. Hmm. Yeah, otherwise the Doctor just dies for free. Pretty good zombie chow. Like, if the if my Voodoo Doctor was a zombie chow, I would've liked it a lot more. At least I can kill this. Costs me my whole turn 3 though. Um, maybe Harvest Golem instead. Yeah, seems better. Like next turn I could play Ping and Shrog or Ooze if he coins out of True Silver. So many divine shields. I wish I would have drafted a blood knight. <laughs> okay. But that's what I talked about. Now I can ping and play a two drop. I have five and six upcoming, which is pretty good. And both of these trade with his. Uh, Crusader. There's six cards. Yep. One of this is a coin. Slot special. Slot special. Cannot speak anymore. Slutch Belcher into Boulder Fist Ogre is pretty good. Although it doesn't kill this one. I want to hold on for to the ooze as long as I reasonably can. Um, let's just do I want to protect the the Belcher from the Dragonling. Might be reasonable to do so. Just because this is protected behind the Belcher right now. And in case of a Consecration, or in case of a Blessing of Might, or a Blessing of Kings or something, um, I don't want to have too many targets on the board. Put this apple on your head. So I wish I could play my Flamestrike right now, already. We must cleanse okay. the sun well. Don't hit this, don't hit <sighs> Every time I say don't hit something, it hits something. Okay, I stick to the plan, I guess. And I have to kill the knife checker. <sighs> if it wouldn't have killed the damaged golem, I would have been in a much better shape now. Could have just simply killed this too. That's why knife juggler is such a good card. Truth is my shield. Hmm. 
So that seems, uh, that's really good because he, like, he played a minion that I want to ping now. So I cannot kill this off with my hero power. That was a good move. So my turn is pretty much given. It's this to make the divine shield. To deny him the divine shield value. And then I play these two. To threaten these two. He will run one into this. But nothing really dies to consecration. The cycles. And I'll have a later occasion where I can play the flame strike. <laughs> So it's his four cards plus coin against my three cards and the two on the board. His four cards against my four cards now, basically. And the cycle, so it doesn't really count. So card-wise, we're kind of even, but his board is a little better. Oh, a lot. Oh, that's a really good draw. Um, I guess I'll play it and then trade the loot harder. The ooze that dies to this, but then I can ping it. Did he have a, an occasion where he wanted to play a true silver champion? I have wanted to. Oh. Actually, I could have just flame striked. Now needs two damage. If he has a consecration, ah, oh. okay, he doesn't have it. Reporting for duty. Okay, and that's a lot of minions. Uh, I guess I'll just flame strike and hit his face. Good enough. I probably should have done it last turn already. But I'll be just like you. three cards plus coin. I have four cards after the draw, and two of them are on the board already. That was a mistake. So, if he doesn't have a peacekeeper for this, or a humility, or a big game hunter, then. Should be in a pretty good spot. For duty. Eleven, twelve, he goes down to six. I still have a fireball in here. So I have a knife juggler. Um he kept this card for the whole game. So I want to play around my control tech, I think. So I won't play four minions. Which makes the knife juggler kinda obsolete, but Could trade here, but I don't think it's worth it. Put this apple on your head. Oh, I could trade here. Actually, I could. I could do a lot of trades here. Uh, okay, let's let's do this and go for the 50-59. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Got it. So he basically needs equality plus clear, like Avenging Wrath, Consecration, Pyromancer, there we go.